In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. If you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below. Consider hitting that subscribe button and tapping the notification bell so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Also, if this video is super helpful and you wanna give back, there is that little thanks button. Make sure you bump that button and leave me a tip. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump right in and I'm gonna walk through how to use this tablet for beginners. We're gonna start first with uh, just a tour of the outside of all the buttons. So on the left side, you'll find that there are no buttons, but there is a SIM card tray. If you do have a memory card from an older phone or an older tablet that you would like to use on this tablet, you'll need to find your SIM tool from the box of the, the tablet or from an old phone box. And you can simply insert that on the left here to pop out your tray and to put in a memory card right there, okay? Now on the right side of the tablet, you will see a power button and a volume up and a volume down. Now simply tapping the power button is gonna put the tablet asleep or put it to sleep. And when you tap it, it will wake up the tablet. Now that we've tapped the button and it's awakened the tablet, if we want to get into the tablet, we simply need to put our finger on the screen and drag up, okay? Finger on the screen and just drag it across the screen, okay? Now we currently have a passcode on the tablet. So when you do the swipe or the drag, it will ask you to enter a password. Put your finger on the screen, drag it up. And then you're gonna do the pattern and that's how you unlock the tablet. And that's because I have a password on it. You don't have to have a password on yours, keep that in mind. I like to have one on just uh, to be able to demonstrate that process. I also wanna point out, if you notice, every time I unlock the tablet, the picture on the lock screen is different. If you wanna learn how to do that, I'll have a link at the end of the video to our tips and tricks video where I'm gonna go over more advanced things that you can do on the tablet once you learn how to use the basics. So um, we went over buttons here, um, power, volume up, volume down. The last thing I wanted to show you is the bottom of the tablet. You will have your headphone jack to the left right here. And sorry, it's a hair blurry. There we go, that's better. So we have our headphone jack here and we have our charging port here. Now the name of the type of charger the tablet uses is called a type C charger type C charger. So if you'd like to purchase an additional charger, make sure you look for a type C charger. Very important. Okay, so now that we've gone over the button layout and the exterior of the tablet, let's focus on the interior and which is how to navigate the screen. You will find at the bottom of the tablet, three buttons, recent apps, home, and your back button. Now let's walk through what each of these buttons does. So the home button always takes you back to this screen, which is called the home screen. If I were to tap on any one of these little icons that are known as apps, now just for a, a learning note, apps is the short version of application. Think of this like a computer has programs, tablets and smartphones have apps. So, when you hear me say app or application, I'm just referring to these little icons on the home screen. These are the programs that run on the tablet. So if I were to tap on this icon here or this app, this would take me to the internet. If I want to search for a website, I would be uh, going through that uh, app, which is called Chrome. And I can just type in any website here. Let's say I typed in AOL dot com and hit the go button it will take me to the aol website and there it is now if i want to get back to that home screen i need to tap on that little circle at the bottom of the screen and that will always take me right here back to my home screen no matter what you're doing no matter what button you've pressed this button will always take you back to the home screen 
If you ever don't see this button at the bottom of the screen, all you need to do is swipe up from the bottom. And when you swipe up from the bottom, it usually will show these three buttons. So that's one little tip to just um, be aware of. Cause sometimes if you're watching a video, those icons will disappear so that the whole screen covers to show the video. You'll just need to do that little swipe up and then it will show the three buttons. Next on the left side here, we have the recent applications button or recent apps. Every time you open one of those little apps, um, unless you close it, they're going to stay running in the background of the tablet. So to give you an example, we tapped on this icon here, Chrome, which is the web browser. And guess what? We, we went in here and then we tapped the home button. When you go to the home button, it doesn't close out this application. It's still running in the background of the tablet. So if you want to actually close it, you have to hit recent apps, our button right here, and then you have to swipe up. And now that application or app is closed. And if you notice, I have a few other applications that are open, you know, Paramount Plus, my settings, my YouTube, Google Play Store. And if you want to close all those applications out at the same time, simply tap on the close all button right here, and that will close all of the running applications. Where running apps is also very useful is you might be in the web browser reading an article and you might put your tablet down and then you may come back to it later and you may use your tablet for something else. And then even later you say, oh, I really want to finish that article I was reading. Well, you can tap on recent apps and guess what? Your web browser is still running and you can easily just tap on it to go back there and continue reading what you were reading. So that's one cool purpose of the recent apps. I'm going to tap the home button here to go back to the home screen. And now let's go over how the back button is used. So for the back button, I'm going to demonstrate this feature in the settings menu because this is the best place to, to showcase this. So I'm in the settings right now. And let's say I'd like to make some adjustment to some setting on the tablet. And let's say I tap display and then I tap screen zoom. Okay. So I've tapped a few options and now I'm deep into the settings. If I want to go back one option, or one page, I need to use my back button. This will take me back one page. I can tap it again to take me back another page. And now I'm on the main screen of the settings. Now, once you've gone back as far as you can go in that application, if you hit the back button again, it actually will take you to the home screen. So the back button is very useful. Now, one thing I want to point out, most applications, will also have a back button in the corner. So depending on how you're using the tablet, it might be more convenient to hit the back button at the bottom, but you might be holding it high up with your fingers and then it might be easier to just hit this back button. You have two different options, but if you notice, once you get to this screen, there is no more back button at the top, but this back button is always there. So these are the three buttons that you would use to navigate the screen. Navigating just meaning moving around the screen. Now, the next thing I want to show is what is called the notification panel. So go to the top of the screen. You'll see these two dots and you're just going to swipe down from the top of the screen and it's going to bring up uh, a list of shortcut settings options. So these different switches control different features on the tablet and probably the most important features that you would be using. So for example, if you'd like to connect your tablet to your home Wi-Fi network, you'll want to make sure that this icon is lit up in blue like it is now. This tells you that Wi-Fi is turned on. And if I want to connect to a Wi-Fi network, I'm going to put my finger on the button and just keep it there for one second and it's going to take us right to the settings menu that controls Wi-Fi. Now I can look for my Wi-Fi network in this list. And let's say your Wi-Fi network was named Bless 5G. You would tap on that 
and then you would just simply type in whatever the password is down here and then hit done and that will connect you to that Wi-Fi network. So that's how easy it is for you to connect to Wi-Fi on your tablet. If you go out to Starbucks, Denny's, any public restaurant that has Wi-Fi available, you just simply ask, hey, what is the name of your Wi-Fi network? And also, what is the password? You'll then, like I just showed, look for the name of the network in this list, tap on it, enter that password, and then you're all set. Now guess what? We can use our back button here to back out of this menu and now we're back on the home screen. Swipe down from the top of the screen again and just show you a few more of the options that you'll find in here. If you'd like to put your tablet on silent or vibrate so it doesn't make noise, you'll tap on this icon. So when you see this, the slash over this little speaker, this means that the sound is turned off so it won't make any noises if you're in public. Tap it again. So actually this one does not have a vibrate option. It's just sound or no sound. On the phones, if you tap it once, it will take you to a vibrate first and then the sound off. So it's a little different for the tablet. Here we have the Bluetooth button. If you'd like to connect your tablet to a Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth uh, headphones or keyboard or any type of Bluetooth accessory, you'll treat this the same way we treated our Wi-Fi icon. You're just gonna hold down on the icon it will take you to the Bluetooth menu. Now this section works a little differently, so I just wanna point out one of the differences. So when you hold down on that Bluetooth button for one second, it will take you to the menu, make sure that it is showing us on. Now what it will initially do is it will start searching for Bluetooth devices. Sometimes you turn on Bluetooth, and guess what? You didn't have your device in the pairing mode fast enough and so what's gonna happen is it's gonna scan for a bit to see if it can find any devices to connect to, and then it's gonna stop scanning. So if you had headphones you wanted to connect and you had to run to the other room and you had to grab them and come back, well, once they're in pairing mode, you'll need to come up to the top here and tap on scan. And when you tap scan, it will begin looking again to look for any Bluetooth devices that are available for it to connect to. And once you find one you want to connect to, you would just, you know, tap on it and then you would type in or for this, you just simply tap on it and it's, it should automatically connect. It shouldn't ask you to do anything else in most cases. So that is the Bluetooth, how to use the Bluetooth feature. And you'll find a bunch of other really useful features here. This button is for rotating the tablet. So you'll notice right now, if I take the tablet and I rotate it sideways, the whole tablet screen is gonna rotate. But if I hold it back up straight, it rotates that way. But if I were to swipe down and I were to tap this little button and turn off the rotation, well, guess what? Now, if I try to turn the tablet in the landscape position, it's not gonna rotate the screen. The screen is gonna stay this way because we just turned off the auto rotate feature. So I'm gonna bring it back up, swipe down again, and I'm gonna tap, and now that it's back on, if I take the tablet, rotate it, guess what? It's gonna rotate with me now. So in case you might have noticed your tablet not rotating, just simply swipe down and make sure that that button is lit up, and if it's not, go ahead and turn it on. Now the, the button to the right is airplane mode. Obviously, when you take off for a flight, you do need to have that lit up. Now, this button here is an important button that I would say you guys may find useful, um, you know, at, at different points. So for example, if your battery is low and you're trying to finish watching a video and you don't have your charger, you can always turn on the power saving mode. And what this will do is it will turn off some of the background functions of your tablet so that the battery will stretch for a longer period of time. It does slightly slow down the tablet, so if you're playing a game that is graphically intensive, I wouldn't recommend keeping it on. Um, but if not, I would say turn it on so you can stretch your battery life. Now, you'll also notice you have a shortcut in the upper right corner to the settings. So every time you swipe down from the top, you can get right to your settings menu by just tapping this little wheel in the corner. 
Now also, so one swipe shows you this menu, but swiping a second time will actually reveal even more options. So you'll have um, a quick share feature, which allows you to share pictures and content back and forth from others who have Android phones. You have a nearby share, which does a very similar thing. If we swipe over, we have a few more options here. You have a do not disturb option, so it will not allow notifications to come through your tablet. Dark mode, which actually uh, changes the color of the menu from dark to light. So depending on your eyes, you might like that or you may not. Um, there's a call and text feature where you can have this linked to your phone. You also have a QR code scanner. If you're trying to scan one of those little QR barcodes, you can scan it with that direct option there. You have a kids mode if you have little ones at home and you want to take them to a safe section that just has games and content for them, you would tap on the kids mode. And then you have focus mode, which is great for when you're trying to focus on one thing and you want to block out distraction. Turning this on will limit your access to other applications so you can focus on whatever it is that you'd like to do. You'll notice a couple of other menu options are now available. So as I swipe left and right here, it's gonna increase and decrease the screen brightness. So if you're saying the tablet is too bright, this is a very easy way to increase and decrease the brightness. Also, you'll notice we now have a few additional options at the top of our screen here. So I just wanna show this again, just so you can see. If I swipe once, I just have a settings shortcut at the top. When I swipe again, now I have a search button that I can use to search for anything on the tablet. I have a shortcut to the power button. If you'd like to turn off the tablet altogether, you simply hit the power button up here and that will shut off the tablet completely. If you hit that button, you'll then have to hold the power button to turn it back on. And then you'll have these three dots in the corner here that will give you some other options so you can edit the order of all these buttons up here, change the layout, you can change the options with the status bar, so these are just different shortcuts. So this is what is called the notification panel. And as you notice, um, it's a shortcut to a lot of the key uh, functions on the tablet. It's just putting them in one spot to make it easy for you to quickly turn on and turn off important features on the tablet. So again, that is the notification panel. Next, I wanna go over applications. So if you wanna to get to the other applications that are on the tablet, you'll simply need to just swipe up and this will take you to what is called your app drawer that holds all of the applications that are on the tablet. You'll notice at the top here, you have three folders that hold uh, specific Samsung apps, Google apps, Gmail, Maps, YouTube. All of these are in this one spot, Google Movies, and then a Microsoft folder for your Outlook and OneDrive and Office if you plan to use those. And then some other options here, a Samsung Store, Samsung Notes, all of your applications are gonna be in this section. Now your next question is probably, well, how do I get more applications? I wanna play this game and I wanna use this. Where's Netflix? Where's Hulu? I want all these other applications for the tablet. Great question. So we'll need to go to the Play Store and the Play Store is where you'll find all of the applications um, that are available to download. Now, one important note before I go into the um, Play Store, when I tap the Play Store, you notice it came right to this screen. If on your tablet, it did not take you right to this screen, it might mean that you have not signed into your Google account yet. You might even say to yourself, I don't have a Google account, what do I do? Well, in that case, you're probably on a white screen with a blue border at the top that is saying, sign into your Google account. What you'll need to do is either enter your Gmail address and your password or your Google account. Um, if you don't have one, underneath that box is a button that says, 
create create account. You might need to tap create account and set up your own Gmail account. Now you might say to yourself, I don't want a Gmail account. I have an AOL. I have another type of email and I don't want any more. I understand your point, but Google requires you to have a Google account in order to download applications. So if you don't have one, tap that button and go ahead and create your account. It literally takes two minutes. If you have one, but you've forgotten the password, simply tap on the button, forgot password. You should see it right below the box on your screen and follow the prompt to reset your password. If it ends up being a long process and you're not able to get in, just simply go back and create a new account. And the account, you don't have to give it out. You don't have to send emails with it, but um, you do need it to have access to the Play Store. Okay, now that we're in here, let's talk about how to download applications. So let's pick an app that we'd like to download. Let's say you say, I love Netflix. How do I get Netflix? In the box, right at the top here, you're gonna just tap. And you have two options. You can type in Netflix, right? Or I can tap on the microphone in the upper right corner and I can have it automatically search for Netflix, just like this. Netflix. Now it's a lazy shortcut, but it works. Especially if you know what you're trying to download, just tap the microphone, search it. And this button will either say install, or in this case, mine says update because I already have Netflix on the tablet. I just need to update it. And you'll notice when you search for an app like Netflix, it will recommend other apps that are very similar. So here you'll see Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, Spectrum TV. These are all available for the tablet. So if I wanted to download my Disney Plus, I just simply tap on that application and I'll just need to tap install just like that. Now, one important thing I want to note is if you ever see that green button, but it doesn't say install, instead it has a price. That means that it's not a free application. It means that you have to pay for it. So pay close attention and make sure you don't end up paying for something that is not exactly what you are looking for. Make sure that if there's a price that you are okay with paying that price because you only have 10 minutes after downloading it to get it refunded before um, you're no longer able to get your money back. Okay, so I just downloaded two applications. I wanna point out one more thing and then we'll go and I'll show you where these applications are gonna go once they're downloaded. I'm gonna hit the back arrow here. And I just wanna point out on this screen, you have a lot of different options. Now at the bottom here, it says games because by default, it's gonna take you to the games page but I can also tap on apps and it will just show me applications. I can tap on movies and TV. And this section, these are all items that you would need to pay for. So if I wanted to download the Avengers, obviously there is a price. Notice it doesn't just say install. So that means if I tap on that, I have to be prepared to pay for it. I'm going to use my back button to go back and if I tap on books, there's a whole section where there are books that I can purchase. They also have audiobooks, comics, and lots of other things. So um, this is a good section to just, you know, tap on the different categories to see the different um, apps and other things that are available. They will sort things by top charts, what are the most popular, what are great apps for kids, Got lots of things to look through here. Okay, now I'm gonna tap the home button. And if I wanna get to where those applications were downloaded, I need to swipe up. And here it is. There's my Netflix. There's my Disney Plus. So that was the process to download an application and also the process of where it goes after it's downloaded. If I'm ready to go in, I just simply tap on Disney Plus and then I would either create my account or I would sign in to my existing account and that's it. 
I'm going to hit the home button to go back to the home screen. And next, what I'd like to go over is how to sign into other Google or excuse me, other email accounts that are not Gmail. Now there is a cool feature that a lot of people don't know about, which is um, you can go to the Gmail app, the one that says Gmail, and Gmail will allow you to sign into other email accounts aside from Gmail. So if I tap on add another email address, these are some of the other options that I can use to, to sign in. I can sign into an Outlook, Hotmail, a live account, a Yahoo, or an Office 360. Now, one important thing to note the other option is a little tricky and it doesn't always work. So let's say you have an AOL or an older email account and you don't see it on this list. Here is the process of how you would sign into that account. So we're going to go home. We're going to go to Play Store. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a search at the top of the screen here. I'm going to type in First, so watch the keyboard closely so you can see what I do. Right next to the control button right here, there is the button with the exclamation point. Tap there, tap the at symbol, and then we're gonna type aol.com space, and then I'm gonna hit email. And then hit the magnifying glass again to do a search. And at, uh, on this page, you'll see all of the different options. These are all apps that support AOL email addresses. So as an example, I can download this app here, email, and it will allow me to use my AOL and password login to get into my account. You can also swipe up and you'll see a whole list of apps that support AOL email addresses. Now, if your email is different, Maybe it's um, at sbcglobal.net. You'll type in at sbcglobal.net space and then email and then that will show you the list again of the, the apps that will support that type of email address. Now from the list I see here, I'm gonna share with you the one that I use because I do have an old AOL that I check from time to time. Uh, and it sounds odd, but I use the Yahoo Mail app and it works. For those of you that maybe just have an AOL and nothing else, you can also just use the direct AOL application and just simply hit install. And once it installs, you can go to it and type in your email address and password to get into your account. All right, we've come to the end of our video and I wanna show you one last thing before we close out the video, which is a really cool case from a company called Unicorn Beetle. And this is a very durable and sturdy case that I would recommend you use for this tablet, especially if you plan to give this to a little one, um, because obviously tablets are fragile and it can only take a few drops before it will affect the quality of it. So I wanna show you, um, I'm gonna put the tablet in this case just so you can see it. And I'm gonna give you a chance to win a case. That's right, I have an extra one here that I would love to give away to one of you viewers as a thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. So I'm gonna show you what the tablet looks like inside so you can see just how durable it is. All right, unplug my charger and we'll just take the tablet, insert it. It fits nice and clean. Take this out, take all this other stuff out here. And actually, I did that in the wrong order. So first, you'll need to take the tablet and put it into the front. Make sure the front is on first. Then we'll flip it. And then put it inside. 
And now we'll just press at the bottom and top to make sure that it's securely fastened. You still have slots at the bottom to plug in your Type-C charging cable as well as your headphone jack. Your case is gonna have a kickstand so you can sit it up, easily watch your movies. And this, uh, it also has a bump in the back for your camera as well. And this is gonna be so secure and so durable that will really help to protect your tablet against you dropping it or something falling on top of it. So again, this is the Unicorn, or excuse me, Unicorn Beetle case by Subcase. I will leave a link below in the description of where you can purchase one. And I'll also have a link in the comment section down below. If you like it, feel free to uh, click the link and purchase one. Now I wanna give out one of these cases. As promised, I have an extra one right here. And I wanna give this case out to one of you viewers. All I want you to do is subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I want you to also hit that like button to like the video and leave me a comment and let me know if this video was helpful and specifically what was the most helpful tip that I shared in the video. That's all I'd like for you to leave and I will pick a winner in the next seven days. So when this video goes up, the first seven days, I'll be looking for all the comments and then I will reply to one of those comments and say, you're the winner. And then it will be up to you to reply with an email address or I'll give you an email to connect with me at so that I can send you your case. Shout out to Subcase for sending this case. I think it is a great durable case that really helps to protect this awesome tablet. Hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.